don't know who's looking or you know who's on you who has you as a target in their eyes i think you should be very afraid this is ben and chris or at least that's what we'll call them Together, they created a class that teaches people how to hack in order to learn defensive cybersecurity. Insert these panels very fast. It does it very fast. And then the wits will respond. All this happens very fast. They give their students the tools and techniques that real hackers use to break into systems every day. So far, they've given instruction to nearly 30 people. There's a lot of schools out there online going online showing people how to code. Why? Because we are moving into a te you know, technological uh, world and understanding code is understanding how these things are running. Definitely can learn how to hack online. It's a lot harder though because you don't have somebody in front of you showing you the ropes. So this is the one we're going to be attacking. So let's just stay on this page. We're going to point all our tools that we, we, we spoke about. I believe that people can understand a lot better when they're doing the attack. They, they see what's going on, so they get a, a, a broader awareness. Okay, how this is happening. Now, how can I counter this? Malicious hackers remain a growing threat to both organizations and individuals as life becomes more and more connected to cyberspace. Yes, normal people should be afraid of being hacked. You should definitely know what's going on so that way you can better protect yourself. But is the average person afraid of being hacked? Are they taking the steps necessary to protect themselves? I think everyone's afraid of being hacked. It's not something that I think about every day. Yeah. I'm worried about getting hacked. <laughs> I do know people. I have not. Um, I have not personally been hacked myself. Uh, no, I don't do anything to prevent hacking on my computer. I don't really have firewall or anything like that. I use firewalls and I also have um, software on my computer that prevents hacking. With the way our, I feel like technology is going and how people are now starting to like sell certain information, I think everybody's just going to have to be extra cautious. Andre Krahel is the CEO of a major cybersecurity company. He agrees that users need to be cautious. It's much easier to cause harm in digital world as it is in physical world. Everyone has to start living with a certain level of paranoia. Andre's firm works closely with government and private clients to investigate network intrusions. Everyone can be fooled. It's just a reality. We are all busy people, we have lives, and we like to click. So the most common threat is that something's going to come in, user's going to click, and something malicious will be executed on his phone, computer, or device. Right now, the common one is definitely ransomware. They hold you hostage for your files, and you have to pay to unlock the files like a WannaCry. In May 2017, the WannaCry ransomware attack infected hundreds of thousands of computers worldwide, forcing users to pay a ransom or lose their files. WannaCry received a lot of publicity, but it pales in comparison to the over 1.3 billion data records lost or stolen from company databases in 2016 alone. And how do hackers benefit from these attacks? For example, stealing your banking credentials or harvest your email. Imagine everything that goes to your email. If someone really wants to reset you, they get your email, they can pretty much reset 70% of your life. You're giving these organizations a lot of power. That, yeah, a lot of power. You're giving them a lot of, of your information and you have no idea where it's going to. In a way, if they get hacked, you're exposed. So if hacking is such a problem, is it really a good idea to turn more individuals into hackers? Well, we don't look at hacking in a way as is like, you know, it's criminality, because a lot of times that's how I explain, that's how it's shown, hacking is criminality. Hackers are usually individuals who are very curious. They go in very deep domain with very granular details to understand how things work. I think what the hacking really should be, it should be an instrument for us to understand what the weaknesses are. You can use it for good, you can use it for bad, it's up to you. We, we can't tell you what to do. They have a right to choose or will to choose, either they go for good or they go for bad. But hacking in general is a, is a momentum of curiosity for someone to exploiting and mastering his own domain. It's not necessarily a bad thing. The whole course was, was, was built in that mindset that, okay, if they can use this on a negative side, how big is the impact? And I try to minimize that. But yeah, I do feel like I have responsibility. That's why I always advise them not to do bad things. Obviously, I cannot control what people do with their knowledge. But does the average person really need to learn how to hack? How can they start defending themselves right now? Normal individuals, it's, I don't think it's necessary to understand how to hack. But every day you wake up in the morning, you're thinking you're helped, right? During a day. So the same way as you're thinking about yourself and how you operate in a society, you should start thinking how your devices 
are plugged into the cyber ecosystem. But if you want to understand the code, if you want to understand the tools, if you want to understand the science behind it, be sure that you meet with the talent. The more information you have on your target, the higher success rate. You know, you're using 